All right, Shalom. I would like to open up by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak Kudash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and preach the truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hopefully elect. And uh, today's lesson, I have an article off the End Time Headlines app. And <clears throat> as you can see, the headline reads, Fears of World War Three Escalate. As Putin threatens to expand war to EU nations, now we understand, you know, dealing with dealing with uh, uh, Putin, Russia. That also we understand Russia is going to be, you know, uh, Russia is a key uh, character and prophecy concerning the scriptures. Man, we go to Ezekiel the thirty eighth chapter. See, also the EU nations also have a part to play in prophecy. And we go to Revelation seventeen. Okay, but I want to start out. In the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 6, it says, and these are words in the red letters, so these are the words of our Lord Yahweh Shai. It says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So when we see articles like this come up, and when we see threats of nuclear war, so on and so forth, we understand that these are the rumors of wars, and we understand that, uh, like our Lord Yahweh Shai said, that the end is not yet. Like you said, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So certain things, all right, have to unfold in these latter days before the end, all right, of this current wicked kingdom comes. Because we're in the end days, okay, but the end, okay, some things, all right, some events must unfold. And we're about to get into them, okay. And one of those events are wars and rumors of wars, because also in this impending war, World War Three, okay, that's the end of this wicked kingdom, man. Okay, let's read that again. Matthew 24 and 6. It says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So these are a multitude, excuse me, these are a multitude of signs or precursors that, that must take place Okay, before the end of this current world, the end of this current age happens. You see, because ultimately, once again, in verse 6, our Lord Yahweh Shai said, for all these things must come to pass. You see, so ultimately, these things have to come to pass in order for the kingdom of heaven to be established upon earth, man. Okay, verse 8, it says, all these are the beginning of sorrows, man. Meaning, it's only going to get worse from here on out, man. You see, this is just the beginning, man. All right. The world, the world uh, uh, hasn't experienced, you know, what's to come. You know, this is just the inkling, you know, of what's to come. These wars and rumors of wars. OK, it's, it's only going to aid the, the, the plagues and, and the, the judgments, you know, that Yahweh Bashmashai reigns upon the earth. in these latter days are only going to grow greater and greater and greater, man, until the very end. Uh, let's get this in the book of. um. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 5. It says, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. Right, because you know in the ancient days, you know, wars were more so fought, you know, close quarters combat, man. You know, uh, yeah, men with the uh, shields, spears, swords, so on and so forth, you know, battle cries, you know, lopping each other's heads and arms off, so on and so forth. That was wars in the past, okay, in, in, in ancient times. Okay, but it says what? But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Meaning this upcoming war, World War Three, known in the scriptures as Armageddon and the Hebrew Harmagawan, meaning mountain or hill of troops. Okay, and in this upcoming war, or in World War Three, this is going to be fought with burning and fuel of fire. By way of what? By way of those nuclear missiles, man, those ICBM missiles. Okay. Um so this is an a article from uh, End Time Headlines. The headline reads, Fears of World War III escalate as Putin threatens to expand war to EU nations. It says Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin's ambiguous rhetoric concerning the expansion of Russia's conflict against Ukraine to other states is intensifying fears of a potential World War III outbreak. In a recent, new, excuse me, in a recent interview with VRT News, Belgium's chief of defense, Mike, uh, M Michel Hoffman, has raised the alarm over the escalating threat posed by Russia to Eastern European nations. 
It says Hoffman highlighted Russia's unsettling shift to a war economy and expressed deep concern about the Kremlin's language, emphasizing the need for vigilance. I think we are right to be concerned. It says the language used by, by the Kremlin and by President Vladimir Putin is always ambiguous, he said during the interview. It is possible that they might open a second front at some point in the future in Moldova or in the Baltic states. It says highlighting the similarities with the current crisis in Ukraine, Admiral Hoffman called upon European nations to exercise heightened vigilance. He pointed out that Moldova and Baltic and the Baltic nations, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania stand out as the most probable targets on Russia's strategic agenda. <laughs> Acknowledging the ambiguity in Putin's language, Hoffman stressed the imperative uh, for European nations to demonstrate their ability to defend themselves against potential aggression. Despite NATO's presence in the area, uh, heightened tensions persist, especially concerning Moldova, which shares a border with Ukraine. Of particular concern is Trans Transnistria, a disputed region where the Kremlin wields substantial influence. Fear looms that Russia, uh, fears loom that Russia could exploit its claim to the region as a pretext for military aggression following the patterns observed in ukraine and georgia you know it's, it's a pretty short article nonetheless but you know hey if we go back to the top you know speaking upon russia okay that the threat posed by russia to europe to eastern european nations so we understand that you know ultimately we come into a time of war okay and ultimately how about shmi Ashai is putting that cold war spirit you know within these russians man are bringing them back to that estate man okay now, uh, that's that's the end of the article right there. Uh, Lord's I'll put the link to the article in the description box. But let's grab this in the book of um, <clears throat> the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 38 in the verse beginning of verse one, it says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, you know, which also this is dealing with Russia. Okay, it says the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against them, you know, which Meshach, Tubal, that's going to the uh, 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 areas of uh, Armenia and Georgia. Okay, verse three, it says, And thus, and say, thus saith the Lord power, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. So also we understand that, you know, due to the fact that we're coming into a time of war, okay, the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yashai, is turning up that warlike spirit inside of these Russians, man. You see, like, you, you see videos of, you know, Russians, you know, training the cold and whatnot. But ultimately, more importantly, you know, Russians, man, they're testing their missiles, man. You know, uh, gaining more access to nuclear capabilities, so on and so forth, along with these other nations. And ultimately, hey, this is all leading towards prophecy. You see, what's happening right before our eyes is the Lord is getting all these nations all right, ready for war, man. Putting the warlike spirit in all these nations, man. Pursuing to uh, uh, what's that? Uh, Joel the third chapter, where it says, "Proclaim ye among the Gentiles." Um, as a matter of fact, I don't want to butcher the scripture, so let's get it. This is uh, Joel, chapter three and verse nine. It says, "Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare a war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up." So ultimately, once a hey, these are going into the natural Gentiles, man, the actual heathen nations, man. See, because ultimately, once again, we're in a time of war. And ultimately, the Lord is going to gather, all right, all these various different nations as we get into it, okay, into the valley of Yahweh's Shabbat, meaning Yahweh's judgment or Yahweh's decision, all right? And ultimately, the Lord is doing this for war. You see, because the Lord, all right, pursuant to Isaiah 34, all right, is getting ready to deliver all these nations to the slaughter. <clears throat> it says, um, verse 10, Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. And, you know, plowshares and swords, you know, excuse me, excuse me, not swords, but plowshares and pruning hooks. Those are agricultural tools you know, used for farming. So 
And the Lord said, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spirits. And what the Lord is saying is pretty much telling these nations, hey, it's, it's, it's no time for farming. man. It's no time for farming. It's no time for agriculture. We're in a time of war. It says, let the weak say I am strong. Right. Because ultimately all these various different nations, you know, uh, uh, great and small. All, right, all these nations are, are, are getting access to these uh, to uh, nuclear capabilities, man, to nuclear weapons. You know, so ultimately, at the end of the day, that's leveling the playing field with all these nations having access to nuclear capabilities. Verse 11, it says, assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. And who are the Lord's mighty ones? Ultimately, the angels. You see, so, and also we understand that when World War III kicks off, okay, we know according to prophecy that our Lord Yahweh Shai, okay, is going to come back with the holy angels and intervene, man, all right, and save his elect, all right, and render death and destruction on these heathens, man. And when you go to, um, uh, second Ezra's. Because Second Ezra uh, uh, thirteen speaks upon this. Um, this is um, Second Ezra chapter thirteen, beginning in verse one. It says, "And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof, and I beheld, and lo." That man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. This is a prophecy of our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right, coming, coming back with the angels. All right, the angels of heaven to render death and destruction. All right, on the land, man, on America and these other nations, man. All right, these armies. Um, let's get this. We'll jump back to uh, um, Second Ezra in the Book of Joel, but let's grab this um, because, like I said, thousands, the thousands of heaven. Okay, let's grab this in the book of Jude, <clears throat> chapter one, and um, let's see, Jude chapter one and verse 14, it says, and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying, behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, man. And ultimately, those are going to the angels, man. You see, it says to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. And of all their hard speeches, which excuse me, it says in all and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. So we understand that ultimately, you know, in these last days, the Lord is gathering these armies together to, to uh, deliver them to the slaughter. Okay, but also we understand that when the Lord brings destruction, a two thirds of his people are going to get caught up in it. You see, because the scriptures say uh, in Amos the ninth chapter, uh, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. You see, so ultimately a lot of Israelites, a lot of Israelites, are, which are you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans are going to die to the plagues before the missiles. Okay, and ultimately they're going to die to the ultimate plague as well, which which the ultimate plague, that's the missiles. Okay, pursuant to Zechariah, the 14th chapter and the 12th verse. Okay, but jumping back to 2nd Ezra chapter 13 and then verse 3, it says, And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. It says, And whensoever, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, excuse me, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth filleth when it filleth his fire. You see, because you know when ultimately when Yahweh Shai comes back, okay, it's not only the missiles, okay, that are going to be doing the damage. Okay, Yahweh Shai and the angels are all going to be shooting uh, those concentrated fire laser beams from within the chariots, man. All right, rendering judgment on individuals upon the earth. Uh, verse 5, it says, And after this I beheld, lo, there was gathered a there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. You know, these are going to the other armies, you know, trying to subdue, you know, Yahweh Shai and the angels, which ultimately they're going to miserably fail. All right. Because at the end of the day, man, the victory is already written. All right. The, the, the judgment of the nations is already written. So there's nothing you can do to win against, you know, Yahweh Shai and the angels. Verse six says, but I beheld. And lo, 
he had graved himself upon, excuse me, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it, which ultimately, you know, this is referring to a chariot, okay? That great mountain is referring to a chariot. It says, um, um, verse 7, but I would, I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not, because ultimately, hey, Yahweh Shai, he's coming back on that huge father shit, man, okay? Verse 8, and after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. You see, so ultimately, hey, these nations or these armies, man, they're going to be afraid at the appearance of Yahweh Shai. Okay, but what the the um the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Shai is going to put the spirit on these nations to fight, man. You, you see, so going back to Joel. All right. <clears throat> Chapter three. And verse 11, read verse 11 again. It says, assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. And we explain that the mighty ones are of the Lord, are the angels. Okay. Verse 12 says, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, which that's the Hebrew. Or Yahweh Shapat, that's what should, should really be there. And it says, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And let's go into that word, Yahweh Shapat. Okay, because when, when you read it verbatim, it says Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat. But when you read it in the Hebrew, it's what? Yahweh Shapat. Yahweh Shapat. Okay. And what does it mean? It says Yahweh has judged. So ultimately, it's going to what? Yahweh's judgment or Yahweh's decision, which ultimately this is going to take place. All right. The valley of Yahweh Shapat is located in the Persian Gulf. Okay, so we're jumping back to um, Ezekiel chapter 38 and uh, verse 5. It says, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them shield and helmet. Which Persia, that's modern day Iran, and uh, Ethiopia and Libya, those are uh, African countries, which I believe Libya, that's in uh, the northern part of Africa. All right, verse 6. It says Gomer and all his bands, excuse me, it says Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togrima of the North Quarters and all his bands and many people with thee, which, you know, this is all dealing you know, within that area of Turkey. It says, verse seven, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them, because really, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, concerning you know this war, you know, Russia is really like a big brother to these nations, man, supplying these nations with um with nuclear defense systems, you know, nuclear capabilities, so on and so forth. You see, and we understand that Russia is going to be that main vessel that Yahweh Bashmi Asai uses to lead the charge. Okay, all right, and shooting the missiles over here in America. Okay, um. Let's grab this in the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 13, and uh, beginning of verse 17. It says, Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which the Medes, in this sense, are speaking of the Russians. Okay, it says, We shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bowls also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity So like you. Let me read that over. Isaiah 13 and 18. It says, Their bow shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. So ultimately, when 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 Russia, all right, beginning with Russia, when these other nations begin with Russia, all right, start shooting missiles over here, it's not going to be any regard for human life on the soils of America, man. And guess what? Man, woman, our children, our babies. All right, they're all going to get caught up in this judgment that yeah, really Yahweh Bashmi Ashai is bringing through the Russians, man, and the other nations. You see? And we understand above the Russians and the other heathen nations, what? Yahweh Shai and the holy angels, man, hey, they're going to be shooting concentrated uh, fire laser beams, all right, out the chariots on the people, all right, executing judgment on the people. And we understand that Yahweh Bashmi Ashai is in control of the missiles because the scriptures say in uh, 2nd Edges, the 16th chapter, strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. 
Okay, so also this all goes back to prophecy ordained by Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. This all goes back to the will of Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. Okay, verse 19, it says, And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. How did the Most High overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah? By weight of fire and brimstone. You see? So this Babylon here is talking about modern day America. So ultimately, how is the Lord going to overthrow? Excuse me. How is the Lord going to overthrow modern day America? By way of fire and brimstone, man. By way of those nukes. Okay. Excuse me. So like you. Verse 20. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Because also when the Lord brings destruction, our scriptures speak upon it, it's going to be an everlasting fire. Uh, pursuant to uh, uh, Isaiah the 34th chapter, say, which shall not be quenched. Okay. It says, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Because ultimately, once America is completely destroyed, there's not going to be any way to come over here, you know, make profit, you know, make gain, you know, build up businesses, so on and so forth, man. Because ultimately, this land is going to be completely destroyed. Okay. So that's said in the Isaiah the 13th chapter. And now we had mentioned, you know, so we, we we went through what uh, uh what what role Russia okay has in prophecy now concerning the EU nations because we understand the EU nations are actually going to turn right against America against Babylon when you grab the book of Revelation chapter seventeen and um, verse sixteen it says and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. These shall hate the whore. And those 10 horns are going into the EU nations, man. And the whore is who? America. Babylon the Great. You know? Hey, America been in bed with all of these other nations, you know, spreading their philosophies, their doctrines, their ways of life. Okay, so on and so forth. So also, when we read from the top again, Revelation 17 and 16, and the 10 horns which thou sawest upon the beast was once again those 10 horns on the EU nations. Okay, these shall hate the whore. And that once again, the whore is America and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire, which is by way of what? By way of those nukes. So we understand according to prophecy that ultimately not only Russia, you know, and those backing up Russia are going to shoot nukes over here in America. Okay, these EU nations are also going to turn on America and shoot missiles over here, man. You see, let's grab this. In the book of um, Obadiah, chapter 1 and um, verse 7, it says, All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. And there is none understanding in him. So ultimately, at the end of the day, we all understand that once that that these uh, nations that were once in league with America are according to end time prophecy. Guess what? They're going to shoot. They're going to turn against America and shoot nukes over here, man. Which is going to uh, result in what? The destruction of America. <laughs> OK, so. um, Yeah, that's it in the book of uh, Obadiah. And uh, really. um. I say we could close out right there. Um, yeah. So I pray that this lesson was edifying into the body. And I pray that you got something out of this. Uh, Lord, so I can put this link up to the article in the description box. But without further ado, I'd like to close out by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and preach this truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hopefully elect, and Lord, I'll see you in the next lesson. Till then, shalom.